welcome to this GCSE computer science video on programming techniques with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. Today's video will focus on subroutines. Subroutines are short sections of code designed to perform one specific task. They are stored under a unique identifier like a variable that can be called when they need to be run. They may or may not take parameters. Parameters are values that can be passed to the subroutine and then used within its execution. They also may or may not return one or more values. Subroutines allow us to decompose our program. A typical game might include subroutines like get user input, display game state, or update player position. All subroutines are either procedures or functions. Both procedures and functions can accept parameters. Procedures do not return any values. They simply execute the code within the procedure and then hand control back to the main program. Functions, on the other hand, return one or more values after executing their code. Notice the difference in the way the two are called. We can just call a procedure by its name, passing any parameters that need to be passed in. However, with a function, we must call it so that it is returned into a location where it can have its value stored in a variable. This brings us on to something called scope. Variables can have either local or global scope. Global variables are defined in the main program and exist throughout the entire program, so can be used anywhere. Local variables are defined within a subroutine and only exist while that subroutine is being executed. If a local variable is given the same name as a global variable, it will, for the purposes of that time, override the global variable. That is, it will always use the local variable if there is a global variable with the same name. There are many good reasons to use local variables instead of global variables in your programs. The first of which is to create self-contained subroutines. This will make it easier to reuse these subroutines in other programs. Because the subroutines are self-contained, they can be tested individually. It's also possible to edit and change one of the subroutines without affecting any of the rest of the program. Memory from any local variables is freed again once the subroutine ends. Using local variables abstracts away the need for programmers to know how subroutines actually work. They need only know its interface. That is, how many parameters are passed to it and what are their data types, and how many values are returned by it, and what are their data types. Using subroutines is what's called modular programming, and it should be the aim of any programmer. It allows us to decompose problems that we're working on, making them easier to solve in smaller, more manageable chunks. Subroutines can be tested independently. They can be reused in other parts of the program or in other programs. They allow multiple programmers to work on the same task at the same time, and they make maintenance of the program much easier. That brings us to the end of this video on subroutines. I've been Mr. Goff for mrgoff.com. I hope you'll join me again soon for another video on validation and authentication methods. Bye for now.